Okay, what's up folks? Rich Van Tassel back with you, continuing on with our game picks for week one of the NFL season. And of course, we are recording audio for Get Live Radio. Our next game up, the New York Jets traveling to Buffalo to play the Bills. Injuries first for the visiting Jets. Lorenzo Malden, linebacker, is on IR. Jordan Leggett, the tight end, is also out. Rontez Miles, a safety, is questionable. For the Buffalo Bills, TJ Yates, a backup quarterback, is on IR. However, Tyrod Taylor, the starting quarterback, is questionable. So you may be seeing a situation where the rookie Nathan Peterman is already thrust into action. But you would have probably heard about it by now, so I would expect Tyrod Taylor to go. And as of course, as we've said many times, that I am always expecting questionables to be able to go. Tanner Vallejo, linebacker, and Jarrell Worthy, a defensive tackle, are both out. Buffalo, a team that I picked prior to the season as just about average 7-9 was the record I have. They're right around 8-8. Eight eight. Certainly, though, they should be able to handle the Jets. And if Buffalo wants to have any chance to move forward in this season and finally get into the playoffs where they have not been since 1999, a Jets team is a team that you simply have to beat. There's no excuse for it. I don't even care if Nathan Peterman, the fourth round pick or fifth round pick, whichever he was, is in the game for this one for the Buffalo Bills. The Jets are terrible. The Jets are not trying to win. As far as what the Jets could do, look, you'd look for you know, Leonard Williams on the defensive side of the ball, along with Jamal Adams, the two young stars. You just look to see, or stars in the making, I should say, you just look to see what they can bring to the table. As far as Buffalo, can they pass the ball? They should really look at it as more of a scrimmage against the Jets. I'm sorry to say that's how bad it is for the Jets this year. But just be able to try to pass the ball without Sammy Watkins, do those things. Try to run against what's still actually a decent Jets defensive line. But that's really, outside of Jamal Adams, the rookie safety, that's really all you're looking at with the Jets is development this year. I expect Buffalo to be able to score some points. If Buffalo doesn't score at least 24 points in this game, it's going to be a long season for the Bills. I expect them to get that. I'm looking at 28-3. to May even be a shutout. The Jets offense is frankly anemic at this point. Next game, a very interesting one actually. The Oakland Raiders are traveling to Tennessee to play the Titans. We know my feelings on the Titans. I've made them pretty well known thus far. Oakland, a team that certainly has championship aspirations as well. So going to be a very nice game to start the season. The injury report for the Oakland Raiders. Obi Melifanu, the safety, is on IR. Jamizi Alawie, the fullback, is out, so they're giving me some difficult names with this one. Garen Conley, the cornerback, is questionable. Corey James, the linebacker, is questionable. Uh, Garen Conley is the rookie. And Sebastian Janikowski, the kicker, is questionable. Now, don't ever discredit that, especially a kicker of the caliber of Sebastian Janikowski. You don't want to be without your kicker or certainly have injuries where you're coming down to a field goal late, especially against a good team or what could be a close game. So keep an eye on that. LaShawn Sims, the cornerback, is out for the Tennessee Titans. He's the only one listed. Can Tennessee find a way to win these type of games that they struggled with early on last year? I picked Tennessee to go all the way to the AFC Championship game. I like what they have. They, I think they can run the ball against this Oakland Raiders defense, which is not terrible. But I'd say their weakest part is probably their defensive line. Even though you have guys like Bruce Irvin and Khalil Mack, those guys are much more pass rushers. You may be able to run the ball up the middle, and Tennessee does have a good offensive line. Mario Edwards as well on the defensive side of the ball for the Oakland Raiders. I'm not knocking the Oakland Raiders' pass rush on the defensive line. I'm knocking whether or not they can stop the run or not even stop the run, just be better than a good running team. So look for DeMarco Murray and Derrick Henry to be effective in this game. I expect that Derrick Carr is going to have his chances down the field to Michael Crabtree and Amari Cooper. Tennessee's defense, their secondary, is probably the weakest part of their team. So they're going to have their hands full with this one. Will Tennessee be able to show what they have and be able to move forward? I'm expecting it in this one. I'm in love with the Tennessee Titans this year for whatever reason. I'm liking 28 to 23. Tennessee comes away with a touchdown late to pull ahead of Oakland and be able to hold on and look for Marcus Mariota to really play well in this game and start to establish himself as a young quarterback on the rise. The Baltimore Ravens are traveling to Cincinnati to play the Bengals in an AFC North matchup. 
Injuries for the Baltimore Ravens. Maurice Candy, cornerback, is on IR. Jalen Hill, cornerback, is out. And Sheldon Price, a cornerback, is doubtful. Now, these are kind of the guys lower on the depth chart, but still, you're missing three corners. That means other guys will have to step up in the nickel and dime. And that's also situations on the special teams where you're losing that many corners. Usually, you know, lower end corners are the guys on special teams, so keep an eye on that. For the Cincinnati Bengals, John Ross, the wide receiver, first round pick is questionable. CJ Azuma, tight end, and Sean Williams, safety, are both out. Would like to see John Ross on the field, especially going against or going alongside of AJ Green. That is, you have potential for an explosive offense with the Cincinnati Bengals. As I said with the Bengals, I think that Andrew Whitworth injury, or excuse me, his release, he's no longer on the team is going to affect this team in a big way. I think there will be a lot of positive plays for the Cincinnati Bengals, but way too many negative plays, sacks, maybe penalties, maybe holds. When you lose the left tackle, it's going to be a difficult situation. I don't like Cincinnati's defense as much as I have in the past, and I just feel after last year they're finally going to start tuning Marvin Lewis out. Baltimore doesn't really jump off the page at me this season. Potentially a playoff team maybe sneaking in at 9-7. and seven. They're good enough and still professional enough to go on the road and be the Cincinnati Bengals in this one should be pretty easy. I like 27 to 16. Cincinnati will struggle to find the end zone in this one. Pittsburgh Steelers traveling to Cleveland to play the Browns, so all AFC North teams are playing each other. Injuries for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Cameron Sutton, cornerback, is on IR, so he's out. Bud Dupree, linebacker, is questionable. Gerald Hawkins, offensive tackle, is out. For the Browns, Danny Shelton, nose tackle, is questionable. Miles Garrett, defensive end, is out. So Danny Shelton, for a team that's as poor as the Cleveland Browns, is one of the better uh, nose tackles in the league, or at least above average. And Miles Garrett, their first-round pick, is out. So already Cleveland's off to a bad start with this season. They have the Steelers coming in. The teams don't like each other. The fan bases certainly don't like each other. Pittsburgh really should come in and roll the Cleveland Browns. Just look for some form of complacency anytime you play the Browns. And, you know, New Year for the Browns, as bad as everything were last year, they may just rise up for a little bit and come out early in this game and maybe give Pittsburgh some sort of problems. I don't see it lasting that long if it happens at all, though. And Pittsburgh's offense is still way too much for this Cleveland defense, especially with the departure of Joe Hayden. Martavius Bryant, Antonio Brown should have a field day. Le'Veon Bell will be effective running the ball. I don't know how much they're going to do running the ball. It'll be more late in the game because I think Pittsburgh is going to throw the ball all over the place early on in this game. But when you're playing that style, you have a chance to get into a shootout. Maybe a few turnovers here keeps Cleveland around. I don't expect it to just be a total thrashing against the Cleveland Browns in this one. But still, Pittsburgh wins 31-13. Should be a relatively easy game in that regard. The Indianapolis Colts are traveling to Los Angeles to play the Rams. Injuries for the Colts, all listed as out. Chester Rogers wide receiver, Andrew Luck, is not playing the quarterback. Vontae Davis, the cornerback. Ian Soberman, the guard, is out. The Rams are not listing any injuries. So, we certainly knew that Andrew Luck had his injury issues. It was almost a certainty that he wasn't going to play. And uh, obviously he's not. I don't know if they're going to turn to Scott Tolzien in this one. I'm expecting Tolzien is going to get the start, though I wouldn't be surprised to see Jacoby Brissett come in the game at some point, especially if Tolzien struggles. Look, Brissett is just a better player. Tolzien is a guy who I think may be the best number three if he was the number three in the league, and that's saying a lot. Uh, he may be even worse than that. I don't think there's a backup quarterback that he is better than in this league, and I think Brissett, especially if you see things start to go wrong, will come in this game. Certainly for the Los Angeles Rams, a big game. You have a pretty bad team that's struggling. I only picked Indianapolis to go 8-8 eight eight simply because of the schedule they have this year. But you have a poorer team without their quarterback coming into your place. You're trying to establish something. Jared Goff did not play a lot last year. 
Certainly, there's a lot riding on it for him. He has Sammy Watkins, uh, Todd Gurley, a bounce back year. Aaron Donald is not playing in this game. Your defensive line did lose Chris Long as well in the offseason. Still relatively solid. If the Rams don't win this game, it could be a very bad season for them. They have the new coach. They're trying to establish something. They're trying to get things started. The Rams really got to have this one. Just look for Jared Goff to be at minimum proficient, and I see the Rams coming away with this. I expect a sloppy game from Indianapolis. I don't think they're going to get blown out because I don't think Jared Goff is ready to do that yet, but the Rams have to win this game. There are really no other ways around it. I'm liking a score of 21-13. to 13. They're able to get the ball in the end zone enough. The Indianapolis Colts will be turning the ball over, and the Indianapolis Colts also will not have the punch to be able to make up for those turnovers and keep themselves in the game. The Rams come away with the victory 21-13 to 13 in this one. All right, so we will be back in just a little bit to finish up the rest of the Sunday games. Be sure to stay tuned for that. Thank you all.